I don't know what this bridge is called. It's, it's the uh, center wheel bridge, I guess. It holds the, uh, the center wheel and the, uh, the third wheel. And the, the train of gears there. Isn't that what they call it? The train of gears? I think so. Ah, so those are nice and nice and pink. And they seem to be in good shape, as near as I could tell, with the magnification. <clears throat> now I tried to remove some of those, you know, the center wheel or the, uh, the third wheel, and uh, I couldn't do it. They're all locked into place, so I ended up having to remove um, the fourth wheel bridge also. And these may not be the right names for everything that uh, there may be other other names for these bridges and, and whatnot, but I don't know what they are, so I'm making it up as I go along. I guess that one's pink, but just barely. I forget what you call that darn thing. The tiny little bit on the end. Um, it's escaping me right now. Anyway, those are were real nice and straight and they looked good as far as I could tell. I need to get something in a real microscopy kind of thing so that I can look at those very closely and make sure that they're truly are in great shape or if they need any attention. The iridescence of those screws is awesome. And there's the escape wheel bridge. Man, as tight as those little pins and stuff are in there, it's there, you got no wobble going on whatsoever. I'll tell you what, they're solid. I was expecting them to make a squeak like pulling the cork out of a wine bottle. So there, there you can see that's the longer shaft that's for the, uh, that will run the second hand. It's on the fourth wheel. That happens when you have a sub second. Escape wheel looks good. And this is a left-handed thread on this guy. This is the, um, shoot, what do you call that? It's the ratchet. Uh, darn. What do you call that? Oh, yeah, the um, that's part of the keyless work. Yeah, that's the uh, uh, what is it? The winding gear or winding winding wheel? Then the winding wheel, of course, meshes with the ratchet wheel, which is the the bigger one. Pretty side up. I don't have. So this guy, you have to. I guess you probably should have a special wrench, but or something. But um, 
it wasn't super tight and just using the tweezers like that made it unscrew. It's got the square hole that goes over the um, the barrel arbor, and you can see in the lower part the the ratchet the ratchet spring and ratchet. Uh, it's probably not the right name for him, but that's what I'm going to call him. Uh, a ratchety dude engages with the gears. I probably should like take a peg wooger or something and move that so that it's not touching the wheel. Take the tension off the wheel. Ah, there we go. No, no, I guess not. There's got to be a way under there. Ah, uh, success. the front side of the watch. Got my antique cannon pinion remover cannon here. Pinion and voila, nothing happened. got an alternative one. I don't know if it really works. It's got a slot that it's supposed to engage with something and then uh, then it pulls over. But I couldn't get that sucker to fit on there at all. I didn't really think it would work. But I thought, well, I'll try it. So in the end, I had to resort to using two levers and pulling it out like Yeah, one from either side and pop that sucker out. It looks no worse for wear. As far as I can tell. Not that I know anything. Oh, and there's the center wheel. Fortunately, I didn't like bend or molest the center wheel when I did that. It, uh, that's one place where it would be very nice to have the uh, movement holder so that it would just drop down in the center and it wouldn't have any chance of being hurt. Take the barrel bridge off. It's actually three screws though, so at first I didn't notice the center one.
this is the uh, the um, what do you call it? The retention screw for the um, uh, the crown and the stem. I thought or maybe I could leave it in there, but it's too. Um, the hole is not meant for that. So there we go. And this guy didn't want to come out, but it will. I'm just going to leave the ratchet bits and that spring in there because I don't think there's any reason to take that out just to clean it. your barrel. Now I have no idea what this little star-shaped gizmo um, that thing on the bottom is for. I'm really... I don't know what that does. So anybody have any idea what that is for? Um, yeah, uh, boy, let me know in the comments. That would be really, really nice to know. And that there thing is the, uh, that's the guy that locks the, um, the stem in, that little bitty screw. I was making sure I understood the orientation of this guy so that it's got the uh, it's got the um, what do you call that uh, shoot I can't think of what that's called but the um, what's that the winding pinion and there's the sliding clutch um, but they, they mate together, of course, and so you want to make sure that they mate together. And I had to just, like, get this into my head and make sure that I remembered that. And then, of course, the other side uh, actually engages with the winding wheel. That's the final teeth. Okay. The keyless works was a bit grubby, okay. as you would expect. I mean, that's probably the major place of ingress for things. Is okay, and not only that, it's got more grease and stuff on it than most of the rest of the. Uh, so, so there's the Swiss thing, and it's uh, was it 3845 is the number. So I guess that's the movement name or. Uh, model and then the uh, that's the serial number over there i don't know what the five is that's stuck on that side but the serial number is 90343 of course and the jewels in there seemed all to be in good good shape they're again not very red which i think is interesting Maybe that uh, 
they saved the red ones for the ones you could really see and and uh, they used the lower quality ones for um, the ones you couldn't see. I am not sure how old this actually is, so I, my best guess is uh, 1910 or something. There, you can see that short, fat screw. Yeah, so like 1910 or something, I needed to, I, I wanted to, or I don't know what their um, jewel manufacturing stuff was like at the time. I guess I should look that up. Interesting history. So, sorry I didn't get catch the uh, taking the top of the uh, barrel off on camera, but it looks like. Oops. Ah, there's the culprit. I fumble fingered that, but then their thing fell right out there. That, my friend, is the broken off end of a mainspring. As if you hadn't guessed that yourself. Sorry I'm babbling probably too much, but um, I don't uh, I don't have anybody to talk to since COVID stuff is going on, so I'm staying home all the time. So here, let's pull that barrel, ar barrel arbor out. Try not to have things go launching across the, uh, the room. Paying attention to the orientation, so the the shorter shaft, the flatter side is up, and the longer shaft is down. So I have to remember that when I go to put that sucker back together. And this is long. And you're not going to see it, but when I put this back together, I had a heck of a time trying to figure out which direction it actually went. I got it figured out, but um, it did take me a couple of times. And this could have been done a little more gracefully. Yeah. Yeah, that's graceful. You'll see the uh, the outside. So there's the broken broken bit. Just the end on that was that flat piece. And so I um, I got sneaky. If I had, you know was doing this for somebody else, you know, of course I would probably get a new spring. But what I I got an idea, and I thought, you know. Um, there's the little nubbin on the uh, the barrel that the that end, the broken end goes to. Um, here I'm just you know trying to clean this off a little, but there's a little bit of junk on there, not too bad. Um, so I for the mainspring though, uh, I'm sorry I don't have a video of this. I took a Dremel tool and I've got a little diamond end on there, real pointy. And I actually drilled a hole just back of the original hole and made it pretty much the same size. And um, when I put it back together, it worked absolutely perfectly. And using the diamond thing, it didn't get hot and take any of the temper out of the out of the uh, spring or anything. So, you know, I mean, since I'm doing this for me and, you know, this is a learning thing and and uh, and all then um, I think that's perfectly sufficient and actually I was pretty impressed this sucker runs for a long time you wind this guy up and it'll run for um, definitely more than a day 
I gotta say, noisy as heck though. <laughs> hmm. Well, thanks for watching this. I hopefully it isn't like super incredibly boring. I know you've got to be like just the right kind of nerd to want to watch this sort of thing, but that's why I put it out here. I was going to record it anyway because I needed to have a reference and a blow by blow as to exactly how everything fit together. And so for those of you who have interest in this sort of thing, then maybe you'll enjoy it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if there is any um, nomenclature or anything that I got wrong or any um, knowledge that you can send telling me how I could have done better or what I could do better in the in the future. Um, boy, I appreciate any comments. Thanks for watching.